Samoa, population 180,000. Located at the center of the Pacific Ocean, just south of the equator, it's a seemingly idyllic tourist tropical paradise, with warm seas, palm-fringed beaches, and a relaxed pace of life. But at daybreak on September 29th, 2009, disaster struck, without warning, leaving nothing but tragedy and ruin in its wake. There was absolute calmness in the sea. The sun was up there. And then out of the blue came this uh, tsunami. I was actually still in bed about seven. I didn't know what time, but I thought somebody was uh, playing a joke on me because I was still sleeping. I was at home on that early morning and our night nurses here on duty ran me up and they said that they need help. <laughs> The tsunami struck with the greatest devastation along the entire southern coast of the most populated island, Upolu. A cluster of villages bore the brunt of the waves, Lalomanu, Saliapanga and Lepa. Out of the 143 people that died that day, one third of them were from this area. We could hardly move through here. All the stones, the big stones, that, that uh, comprised our seawalls were scattered all over with uh, trees and these post-electricity poles crisscrossing uh, the street and we could hardly move. We had to have uh, earth moving equipment to clear and people were weeping as they were unearthing their loved ones uh, from underneath the debris. Can't be 30 seconds. And when I look up, there was no water in the lagoon. All the um, corals were showing. And you could hear noise, large noise, sucking noises. In this passage just behind me, it's the water that's being sucked out. My nephew, I lost him after when I looked up, the water was so high and I was stuck. Um, unfortunately, he, he was amongst the 14 of our family, of our loved ones that uh, were lost to the tsunami on that day. The whole day it was uh, it was so unbelievable that they're still bringing in the injured ones and the dead people. Following the tsunami, the country's hospitals were overwhelmed. Immediate assistance was needed. The World Bank worked with Samoa's Ministry of Health and Government Response Team to supply doctors, supporting local medical staff. It was a quick reaction. Like doctors used to go out with other uh, doctors out in the villages and they help out to the, to the village people. They went together with a local nurse and just, and, and just show where people live and other doctors stays in here and treat people who bring in the hospital. World Bank experts were in Samoa within days of the disaster and assisted the government to prepare a damage assessment and reconstruction plan. The Samoan government developed a national tsunami recovery plan and rallied donors, aid agencies and others around it to rebuild the destroyed communities. The work of reconstruction was terrific. The assessment that was later made uh, put the total damage uh, to over 160 million United States dollars. Fortunately, we had the speedy response from our partners. 
The World Bank was very uh, happy that we could be of assistance to the government of Samoa. We have provided support to the effort through budget support that the government later used uh, for grants for people to rebuild houses. Uh, we've helped the government repair roads. We've helped the government uh, prepare the seawall. And uh, of course, we've uh, provided assistance to the private sector as well. During the tsunami, in the space of just 20 minutes, more than 5,000 people were rendered homeless. With their homes destroyed and widespread trauma, many could not face the thought of returning to the site of such painful memories. The community of Saliapanga, with their homes now gone, decided to relocate their village to higher ground, where there was nothing but plantation crops, dense jungle and dirt paths. Fa'atamali'i moved into the resettlement village and after several months in a tent, her and her husband built their new home with the assistance of a grant. Sili Apelu is one who has returned to the beachfront to run the family business, Taufua Beach Fales. Although today is rebuilt, he'll never forget the day 14 of his family members perished. We didn't want to make too much change to remind us that um, something had happened to us. And, uh, but uh, so on the beach side of the, of the road, it's almost like what we had before. But on the other side now, we had our homes across the road. We had the four homes across the road. And of course, all, all of those were devastated by the, the wave. Although it was important to rebuild the family business on the coast, Sealy prefers to live in the hills where he's built a live-in motel safe from tsunami and creating new business opportunities. The Saliabunga community today has established homes, a community hall, churches and a school, the cornerstones of the new village. But to draw all this together and pave the way for development, a road was essential. The new road uh, has helped a lot, I think. Uh, before that road, I mean, there was a road there, but the, it was a dirt road. And even to have a vehicle, it's difficult to go up there. Nowadays, it's a nice walking place, you know. Uh, and I think it um, has brought a lot of help and maybe confidence to the people that have moved up there, that the government was doing something for them. The World Bank upgraded the road that was already there and also we built a completely new road to connect our village to Laloman. So that new road connecting this district to Lalomano, I think about uh, three miles 
was made possible because of this, of this assistance from the World Bank and other organizations. Samosuni Salevao has been able to redevelop and grow his copra business along the new road. And today his business has become one of the largest suppliers of copra on the island. <laughs> Although today business is thriving, when he started he had to face several challenges. Samasoni's business now provides employment to the community and he's proud that he can help families around him who, like him, had to start again. <laughs> Trucks bring in raw coconuts from villages throughout the entire district. This has helped many rural families gain an income by leaving coconuts they have gathered for pickup by the side of the road. Agnes Olotolavai has benefited from this setup. Having moved to the outskirts of the new village, her and her family collect coconuts to supplement their income. And having their plantation just across the road has made all the difference. <laughs> Kusa <laughs> A new Saliapanga primary school was built providing a new start to these students who had been through so much. Like many others, the children here were fearful following the tsunami, and building a new school in the resettled community became a priority. Here in my village, the people, especially the parents and their kids, they are so afraid to get back to the, the old building. Hundred and something kids are still in families. They didn't go to school. They are so afraid. And that's the plan the, the village people, especially the men, wanted to build the new school building up here on the moon. Can you name a country? Same side with Western Samoa, Western side of Western Samoa. Now these children can work knowing they're safe. Although most children are now walking distance to the school, there are still the few that live in the outskirts of the village and need to travel by bus or car. This is a, a good idea for the government to rebuild these roads. There are some of the transportation to come for them to get back to come up here on the here to the to where the school is. Yeah. The new road has not only connected the community with the school but also affected every aspect of life. People are so happy to to move freely not only easy way to get close to where they plant and farm, but not only that, uh, best way and quick, quick way for us to get to the Lunalumanu Hospital, to use this road to go to the hospital. Today, the district hospital has returned to its pre-tsunami multi-service functions. Like most things in this area, life has started to return to normal. While people will never forget, they are keen to move on. In the village of Lepa, the Prime Minister's home, villagers gather to take part in ancient oratory and ceremonial traditions. Today, villagers go out to collect coconuts across a newly built road. While children walk home from school, and villagers tend gardens outside their newly built houses. Tourists once again walk the beaches while Fatamali, on a rare occasion, revisits her old home, now overgrown and a shell of what it once was. But for now, she's thankful and cherishes her faith and family. 
pivo li fa alongo li sami a e me le wa yai ya wo wa lango nga ri fia fia ya e wi fo ya nga nga vai vai ka ma a inga ya kali ko wa lai fa so ma le ali so ma le le ali e fo ai ma lung ka ma a inga ya fa pinga ng fa king wa fo ya me ai a ka si ai le o la ma Seely is also reflective as he tries to continue on the legacy of the family business. Well, after two years, we're still struggling. We may, people may look at us that we are okay, but we are actually struggling to get on our feet again. But we are happy to do that. I mean, it's it's part of uh, such disasters. Life has to regenerate itself, so it's all part of creation. Don't blame God for it. And don't listen to people that that was God's wrath. <laughs>